Hi everyone, I'm Harry Berger, and I'm the Green Party candidate for Congress in New York's 2nd Congressional District, which is the south shore of Long Island, mostly in Suffolk with a little bit of Nassau County. I'm the only Green Party candidate for Congress in Suffolk, so even if you can't vote in District 2, this is the campaign for you to join for a government that will prioritize people and planet over profit. I want to thank Students for Climate Action for inviting me to join the Climate Change Discussion Forum for Long Island, and everyone watching for taking the time to educate yourselves on where all of your candidates stand on these vital issues. Before we get into specifics of how we should address climate change and other environmental problems, it's good to understand how we came to live in a world where the East Coast is getting hit by more major hurricanes while tornadoes of fire ravage the West Coast. Corporations get away with polluting the earth for free because they have more influence over most of your elected leaders than you, the people, do. We need to take that power back and stop allowing them to privatize profits while socializing the disposal costs onto you and me. You may get expensive, glossy junk mail from other candidates proclaiming that they take no corporate PAC money, but the quiet part I'm going to say out loud is that corporate PACs are only one of the many strings that the richest 1% of Americans pull to manipulate your government. If you look closely, you may see that some of those ads are paid for that by their party's state committee. That's a pot of money that's funded by the wealthy and controlled by the party leaders who are themselves puppets of the mega donors. There may be a few extra steps in the middle, but it's still bribery in all but the narrowest legal sense. If you're not a millionaire, they don't really care about what's best for you. They also love to gaslight you into believing that there are only two choices. The Democrats are even trying to literally erase political minorities from the ballot. They tripled the votes that we need to keep ballot access and now require them twice as often. So we need Howie Hawkins to get over 2% of the New York vote this year or the Green Party line may be gone for good. I'm the only one in this race who will tell you in no uncertain terms, I have never and will never take any campaign contributions from any corporation, directly or indirectly. That's a core principle of the Green Party at every level, because this is the only way you can trust your leaders will always put the people first. If Grumman and the Navy had contained and safely disposed of the toxic waste at their Bethpage production facility back in the 1970s, that would have been the cheapest solution in the long run. Just don't let it get into the ground in the first place. They knew that the soil and aquifers were contaminated for decades, but they just hid the truth from the public and let it spread out more and more until these chemicals entered the public drinking water supply. Now, 45 years later, the plume of this Superfund site is so widespread that New York State's latest estimate is that over the next 30 years, we will have to spend $558 million to deal with these toxins, and we won't be completely rid of them for up to 110 years. Gorman continues to drag its feet at every opportunity to avoid paying for the damage they have caused. We need to make a public example of them, hold the company liable for the, first, for the full cost of cleanup, identify the individuals responsible for hiding the truth, and send them to jail for gross, gross criminal negligence. This will establish a strong precedent that the cost of lying to the public will be far greater than the cost of doing the right thing in the first place. In the short term, the hazards are too great to wait for these polluters to pay up. The federal government needs to do what is necessary to stop these poisons now and get reimbursed later, before they reach the Great South Bay. The Green New Deal is absolutely essential if we want the human race to survive in the long term. Ten years ago, we started pushing to get greenhouse gas emissions down to zero by 2020. Now we're saying it needs to be done by 2030, only because even a ten-year timeline is very ambitious. The loudest objection to the Green New Deal is always the cost, but the same complainers always seem to be able to find enough money to start another war or bail out an industry that makes lots of campaign donations. Stopping climate change is also a social and racial justice issue. Especially on Long Island, the birthplace of racist redlining, people of color and the less wealthy often live in places that will be the first and worst affected. The first step of addressing climate change is to stop making the problem worse. 
immediately stop all new oil drilling, fracking, and fossil fuel infrastructure projects, as well as construction of fossil fuel power plants. We need to hold those who would extract or import fossil fuels responsible for the cost of removing the waste products from the environment when they're first sold. Those costs include taking carbon from the atmosphere, microplastics from the ocean, and other dangerous chemicals from wherever they end up. But they can get those fees back if they take responsibility for their products from womb to tomb. Then we need aggressive investments in a combination of alternative energy solutions. That's using existing technologies for wind, solar, hydroelectric, and other power sources while researching for improvements. Besides finding clean ways to just generate more energy, we also need to find ways to use less energy, like using high-speed rail systems instead of airplanes. The big problem with that is that airlines are big campaign donors, while there are no well-funded lobbyists for high-speed rails that don't exist yet. That's why you need to say a pox on both your houses to the big two parties and show them you will not let them manufacture your consent. This is the kind of large-scale infrastructure project that will require a large upfront investment and allow us to guarantee a job for every American who wants one in the short term. But it will also save money in the long term by reducing the cost of travel and cargo shipments for generations. As a mechanical engineer, I have experience with the technical details of new technology and a keen nose for when we're being sold a bill of goods by bad actors trying to take advantage of our government. Every engineer hearing the first plan for the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter knows it's 11 in the first 30 seconds. It's already the most expensive aircraft in history, and we're still spending more on it. I also have a second degree in science and technology studies, which examines how politics and other human factors affect technology development, also how technology changes our lives. One of the classic examples of this is the Long Island Parkway system. Robert Moses deliberately designed all the bridges too short for bus buses to fit under. This was to keep neighborhoods racially segregated because at the time they were built, rich white people were buying lots of cars, but black people generally couldn't afford them and had to ride a bus. This makes our transportation system a tool of, a tool of racism, but to most people it just looks like any other bridge. One important part of this plan is that the products of the Green New Deal investment should be owned cooperatively by the people who live with any negative consequences of the projects and though, as well as those who build and maintain them. When you hear the original Green Party plan referred to as the eco-socialist Green New Deal, this is what we're talking about. Climate change isn't only about greenhouse gases and rising temperatures. It's a web of interconnected systems where a breakdown in one disrupts others. For example, researchers have recently learned that the ocean floor has a lot more microplastics than we previously thought. Bottom feeders are filling up their stomachs with plastics and they stop eating, yet it has no nutritional value, plus some types of plastic are endocrine disruptors that cause even more health damage. I'd prefer that we don't find out exactly how that messes with the circle of life if this drives the bottom feeders to extinction. The original Green New Deal got us through the Great Depression in the 1930s. Now it's time for the Green New Deal to be the solution to our current recession while also addressing the dangers of climate change. Join our team now to make this dream into a reality. Find more details, contact information, and links to our social media online at burgerforcongress.com. Most importantly, vote green by November 3rd, row E on your ballot. Thank you very much.